There's a certain level of cruelty that only a group of children can muster. When one is made to wear a retainer brace at age eight, it was surely an unpleasant sight, the metal headgear wrapped around her face. There are lots of stories about the night of her ninth birthday sleepover. Kids say she willed her metal brace into massive jaws, incising her way through the house. But it was no fault of her own. Mandible Judy isn't a nice name for a quiet little girl. Things are now so much in flux with patient 1174 that it's hard to know what to summarize at this point. The behavior of Kenny Howard, breaking into Westmore State Psychiatric Hospital and somehow freeing Judy Caterbeck was not something I could have predicted. The answers for which I've been working so hard may still be within reach, but the consequences may now be more than I'm willing to risk. Ms. Rudolph. We've been looking for you for some time. It's been suspected that your former employer was using some unorthodox procedures with Judy Caterbeck, but we didn't have enough to go on. I read your statement. It's a good thing you came back to testify. You have no idea what a relief it is to hear you say that. Well, we gotta move fast. If Uzi hears you're in town, it'll take measures to cover his trail. Captain, is there any news about Judy? Have they managed to find her? We've had reports from the New York State Police, but they haven't been brought in. They were heading south, though, so they may be on their way to us. We don't know yet. But if three of you wouldn't mind, we could use a positive ID and assistance finding evidence at the crime scene. I think we're all in. Absolutely. Marco, we've been updated every few hours on your dad's condition. No change at the moment, I'm afraid. We're all rooting for him here, son. He's a fighter. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. All right, we're moving in today, so sit tight and I'll set things in motion here. I'll get a car to take Mrs. Gator back home. I think I ought to do that myself, Captain. I'll make sure she's all right and be back in less than an hour. Okay, in the meantime, Ms. Galliard, there's someone free to take your statement now. Come with me, please. You okay? I just wish there was better news about my dad. Hello, Frank. Connor, come on in. Thanks for seeing us, Frank. I think we may be in a position to help now. This is Dr. Stefano, Frank Howard. Glad to meet you. Likewise, Doctor. Please come and sit down. I assume you've seen the reports on the news. People died up at the psychiatric hospital, Connor. I don't even know if Kenny is alive. We've heard that he drove off with Judy Caterback. <sighs> Thank God. So that was more than just a dream Casey had. Casey? He came here yesterday. He said he had some kind of vision or something. He saw Kenny driving on the highway, and the police were after him. I know it sounds nuts. A week ago I would have thought that, but now? Dr. Scafano specializes in genetic disorders, and we've been studying the effects of the rocks. We have a better understanding now of what Kenny might be experiencing. You're going to have to keep an open mind, Mr. Howard. But we can walk you through our findings. How about we just start with what you can do? Then you can give me all the signs you want. Fair enough. Essentially, Kenny is in constant contact with the disruptive force that is causing his erratic behavior. In several experiments, we've seen evidence that certain combinations of sonic timbers can interrupt this force. If we can do that, we can get him to a hospital. We think it would be helpful if you were there to talk him down. It won't be easy. 
We have evidence that Dr. Fuzzi has been injecting Judy Kaderbeck with some kind of enzyme causing psychotic behavior and may have been giving Kenny the same thing. Fuzzi? That no longer surprises me. I went to see him on Friday, and he seemed to be hiding something. We'll keep looking for Kenny, but we need to go to the police in the meantime to explain his condition to them, to minimize the possibility of violence if they take him in. It's a miracle he hasn't been shot yet. Okay, how do we find him? It doesn't feel right, being here without Bo. I gave you the number of the holding facility, if you want to check in on him. I promise, as soon as Fousey is in custody, I'll drive you back up there to see Bo, okay? I was wrong about you. And maybe I was wrong about Dr. Fousey. I trusted him with our child. And now look what's happened. Renee, I'm I'm really I'm so sorry. We'll we'll get through this. I, I just have to go back to the police department now so I, I don't hold anything up. We're gonna make sure they put Fuzi away for a long time, Renee. Why don't you go inside and make yourself a cup of hot tea and I'll I'll be back in a few hours. Here's my little Judy now. Connor Darcy, please leave a message and I'll get back to you. Darcy, this is Dr. Fuzzi. Please call me back at my home number. I need to talk to you about, about the situation with Kenny Howard. I don't know how much you've heard, but... Dear God. Judy, what happened? What? She's not talking to you. She's not really talking at all anymore, in fact. I guess it's hard with, you know, the whole mutation thing going on. Kenny, why are you here? Uh, listen, son, I can help you. Uh, I, I know you must be confused, and I can treat you and, and make this all stop. We just have to... Oh, God, no, Judy. I, I can help you, too. I, I know what I was doing wrong now. Oh, you were doing everything wrong, Doctor. But it turns out we're okay with it, aren't we, Judy? In fact, we really need to get the rest of that super enzyme stuff you were giving us. We thought, well, <laughs> really it was my Uncle Pate's idea. He says we need more of it. Now. It's at my office, Kenny. You can meet me there. I'll, I'll take my car. No. You're coming with us. <gasps> Yes, yes, of course. Oh, okay. Yeah. Copy that. Proceeding to alternate location. Over. Change of plans. Fuzzy is apparently not at home. Turn left at Coozer. We'll go right to his office. I hope he's not there and they could just go in and get the files. I can't stand to see him. 
I know just how you feel. I keep thinking there must have been something I could have done to get Judy away from him. Regrets all around. Copy that. Oh, okay. I can go in and bring the treatment doses out. If you wait here... We're coming in with you, Doctor. Kenny, I've only got a little left. You're going to have to make more then. <sighs> Kenny, listen. Judy has mutated far beyond what I've seen since she's been with you. I, th I think I know why. It's the rocks. You've been holding that rock the whole time, haven't you? You don't need the enzyme. Exposure to the rocks is what's changing her. Two, three, four cars. Did you call the police, doctor? Everyone, freeze where you are. Oh my god. She's changed. Again. Kenny's still holding one of the rocks. Uh, sir, sh should we... What is that? Steady, patrolman. Keep your weapon on him. Anton Fusen, step forward. Away from the others. Officer, we... I don't... Captain, the rock! It's dangerous! This has gone far enough, I think. Cover your ears. <gasps> ah, what is that sound? What? You don't like it? You can all just drop those guns now. Captain! I know. It's a little confusing at first, right? Bonnie. Bon... Can't you hear me? Damn it. Rin. Pyo. To. Sha. Kai. Here. He can explain. Test one, two. <laughs> I'm not accustomed to having such a big audience for my stories, but I'm glad you're all here. Rin, Pyo, To, Sha, Kai, Bonnie, wake up! Catherine, Jesus, is everyone asleep? Your Uncle Pate is a little embarrassed, to be honest. It looks like I lost my hat. I was wearing it for so long, I kind of forgot I had it on. But Judy knows where it is. And Kenny, you'll take her to it. And now, all the rest of you, well... You can just listen to my story. It's a good one. Where I come from, I have lots of friends. Good friends. We looked out for each other. We went on a long trip together. A long, long way from home. And we ended up here. Retsu. Zai. Sin. I gotta stop this. Judy has really gotten to know one of those friends. And so will each of you. Under the floor. Under the floorboards. All of them are waiting. What the hell is going on? Captain, wake up! Our power. Still alive in the stone. Still Captain, wake up! You don't really need all these guns! Who's he wait? All right, everyone just back off. Catherine, wake up! Marco, what happened? Fuzzy has a gun. Stay back. Dr. Fuzzy, no! Please! Doctor, please, don't hurt Judy. She's just a child. You. Both of you. I can't hurt Judy. I was helping her. Stay back. Bonnie, get down. Oh, 
God, what have I done? <gasps> Judy! <laughs> Judy, get in the truck. <sighs> Are you two okay? Yes, I think so. Oh my god. Fousey! Oh, she just bit his head right off. Oh god, the captain's dead. I'm gonna go check the other wounded officer. Marco! Oh my god! What is going on? Thanks for listening to our season finale, season two, episode 10 of Mandible Judy. Our cast this week was Matt Burroughs, David Steele, Aaron Lillis, Lee Eddy, Chris Burke, Nancy Graham, Mike Hall, Tyler Jackson Price, Julia Nervi, Bob Lukomsky, Tamri Adel, and Xavier Ancolata. Music is by Glomag. We're taking a break before season three, which we hope to bring to you by late summer. In the meantime, look out for our micro series, Mudscog and Message Service, coming soon. Follow Mandible Judy on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook, and please subscribe on iTunes or wherever you listen. We rely on support from our listeners, so please help us keep the series going at patreon.com slash mandiblejudy. Thanks, stay safe. 